Welcome back, ninjas. This is our third installment of Whiteboard Friday, and this time we're gonna talk about my favorite language, and that is Python. Now, if you don't love my favorite language, Python, you're welcome to leave right now. This is hands down the best programming language in the world. You wanna learn to write code? You got to write Python. Now, people always ask me, hey, Joe, you do this IT security stuff, you know, shouldn't you be able to program in all these different languages? And the answer is, Kind of, sort of, but not really. You know, we as security people are not programmers. We're, we're not software engineers. We're, we're very much like, I want you to think like, you know, uh, engineer versus carpenter, you know, uh, uh, doctor versus paramedic. You know, we're not software developers. We don't sit down and decide, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write QuickBooks today. Now, let me write out a full-blown accounting application. That's not what we do. We run into problems, so we're like, hey, I'm on a penetration test, and I need to find every machine in the environment that has this. So I'm gonna write something down and dirty, very quick, so I can find that. Or I'm uh, doing incident response, and I need to find every machine in the network that has this file on it, because that's how I know it's infected with malware. Or I'm doing uh, log analysis, and I need to look through all these log files for this particular IP address. You know, you just need to code up a down and dirty script to do that. So that's why most of us who are in the IT security field love scripting languages. Perl, Ruby, Python, interpreted languages. You're not gonna see a lot of us who are doing things like C, C++, Java, .NET, you know, all that crazy stuff. Those are Prize programming languages when you're trying to develop something huge. Not what we do. So let's get down to business. If you want to learn how to code, you need to find somebody who speaks freaking English. The problem with trying to learn how to program is most people who try to teach you how to program don't speak freaking English. Look, man, I just need to write some code that does this. I don't need to know that. You know, Alan Turing came up with these Turing principles that led to these primitives, and this is how computing works, blah, 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 blah. that's not what we do. Look, man, what I need to know is how do I connect to an IP and port and uh, do that across the whole subnet. That's what I need to know how to do. So you need to find somebody who puts that stuff in English. My favorite is this kid on YouTube. His name is The New Boston, all one word. So go to YouTube, search for the new Boston, all one word, then Python. Now you can change out Python with any other language, Java, Perl, PHP, Ruby. The kid does all these crazy tutorials. He'll do like 50 tutorials on a programming language. So it'll be like 50 tutorials in Python. None of the tutorials are more than five minutes long. Hallelujah. Come on, can I get an amen? That's why I love this kid. What I do is I pick... I do three tutorials a night, three nights a week. So go to YouTube, look for The New Boston, all one word, Python, and then do three tutorials a night, that's 15 minutes, three nights a week. Inside of a month, you're going to have the whole language done. Bam, you got this. Now, if you're one of those people who needs to read a book, then what you got to do is you got to make sure that you find books where Greg Perry is either the author or technical editor. Greg Perry puts this stuff in language that us humans can understand. So make sure that you get absolute beginner's guide to whatever language, be it Python or whatever. So that'll be how you get started. Now, once you get started with this, doing your 15 minutes a, uh, a night, three nights a week, that's all you gotta do to get started. Once you get started, you're gonna need to change the way you think. If you wanna think about how to write code, you gotta to learn to look at it differently. The first thing you need to learn is that coding is for lazy people. If you're lazy, then coding is for you. 
If you like working hard and you like doing the same thing over and over and over and over and you enjoy that, you get pleasure out of that, you don't need to learn how to program. If you're the type of person who would rather working on something that saves you 15 minutes at work, then you need to learn how to code because that's what we do, right? We spend countless hours working on things that save us a finite amount of time, but we love that, right? So coding is for lazy people. The next thing that you gotta learn is that you never write more than 10 lines of code, ever. Never, ever, ever. Code, if you're writing, you know, this huge blob of code and it's more than 10 lines, then that absolutely makes no sense. What you wanna do is you wanna learn to modularize that code. So you put them into functions, you put them into subroutines. I'll cover that later, but all you're looking to do is get your code to where it's real compact and concise and easy to work on. What you need to learn is that code can only do three things. Code can only process, it can make decisions, and it can loop. Let's think about this. You need to write a log parser. So there's a whole bunch of log files and you need to look through all these log files for a particular IP address. So, you need to read the log file, right? Then make a decision. If I see this IP address, then print out to the screen IP address found. And you need to loop through every line of every log file in the directory. Does that make sense? So the hardest part about programming isn't the actual constructs, the reading a file, the writing out to the file, the, the making a decision, those things aren't hard. What happens is too many people spend too much time learning the structure of coding, but not learning how to think about code. As soon as you start saying to yourself, hey, I just need to process. I, I either read something in, I make a decision on what I see, or I read something in, I loop through it and then make decisions based on what I see. That's, that's all of what it is. Like literally, that is 99.9% .9 of programming right there. Like look, while I'm doing something, make sure that you do this. Until this happens, keep doing this, right? That's how a decision works. So you read a file, and while you're reading the file, as long as there's lines in the file, do this. You read the file, you keep doing whatever until you get to something in the file. It's a decision, right? And then looping is just say, four X many times do this. So four or five times do this. Four, you know, till length of end of file, do this, right? It's just how many times you do something. That's it. Now, I know people like to make code way more complicated than that, but remember, for us as security professionals, we're not writing software. We write code that does something to help us at work. It's real down and dirty. It's real compact. Okay, the last thing. Once you get through these tutorials, then you learn how to think about the code. The last thing is going to be find some code that does something, right? have a task that you need to accomplish. So what you got to do is go out to my favorite place, packetstormsecurity.org slash files slash tags slash Python. You're going to go here and you're going to look through all the latest Python tools and just keep going through them, go through all the history of Python tools until you find a tool that does something interesting. Once you find a tool that does something interesting, download it, look at the source code, try to figure out how they do it, and then change it to do something that's interesting to you, right? That's it. Find something where you go, you know, I really want to write a port scanner. So go find a port scanner, right? Look at how the code works. Try to see if you can make it be a little bit better or, you know, even if you can't rewrite it, maybe you don't feel comfortable enough to do that. See if you can understand the code. Okay? All right. Well, that's my phone ringing, so I should have turned it off. Sorry about that. Okay, guys, we're going to wrap it up, and I hope that helps you with Python. See you next week. Secure Ninja TV is brought to you by SecureNinja.com. 
a world leader in cybersecurity training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. Secure Ninja, forging cybersecurity experts.